Welcome to Behind Welcome to Behind the Ballot, your TV's exclusive coverage of the 2018 municipal election. I'm York Bellsmith and joining me now in studio is municipality of Port Hope Mayor Bob Sanderson running for re-election. Well, thank you very much and welcome thank back. Much. Well, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Good. For those Sorry, go ahead. No, we're in an exciting time. This we, is a it great is an opportunity it, for people to step forward. We were talking about this before coming to air. It's true. Yeah. It's it's an, it is an exciting time. You get to hear what people really think and stuff, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Uh, for those that are, are new to town and are, are being introduced to you for the first time, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I came to uh, Port Hope in 1973 and opened uh, Port Hope's first small animal uh, companion animal uh, practice. I had had different. Uh, kind of activities through there as well where I ended up doing consulting with some large international companies. That gave me a lot of corporate uh, experience, um, still staying, uh, you know, kind of local. And I think mostly recently um, in business in downtown Port Hope, hotel, a couple of restaurants, uh, very uh, heritage orientated. I've uh, you know, restored uh, three um, heritage buildings, Right. one that was virtually under demolition order. Uh, the other businesses have been in the heritage uh, area. Um, and I think from a, my family lives here, or at least my uh, daughter and her husband and grandchildren. So from a community perspective since 1973, kind of be working within the community. I've been on council in the past. In fact, was on council during the, the great flood of 1980. Right. That was a little stick handling uh, at, at that point in time. Being involved with uh, Rotary and other uh, community you know, sort of activities. The last four years uh, as mayor, working with uh, the population, with the staff, and with the uh, council, has been very rewarding. So, I want to talk about the, the last four years and, and how it's been your first term as mayor. Let's talk about some of the highlights. I'm sure one of them is going to be the replacement of the uh, Barrett Street Bridge. Well, yeah, we can get. <laughs> I have a long. We, list. we have a long list. I'm we can sure fill I'd, the entire half. I'm hour. not sure I'd, I'd start there. I, I think it's one of the accomplishments. But I think what's neat about that is that it's a project that was necessary had a high priority, but we couldn't get funding. Last, last councils couldn't. So I kind of did the you know, direction where you go, we need to work through the um, offices of the MPP or the you know, MP, whichever it is at the time. Right. And if we go through that process, we, we you know, often going to get our funding because it's usually something small that makes the funding not available. Secondly, I think the uh, approach uh, of being reasonable, it, it is our bridge, we just don't have a total handout uh, com coming our way, but the process of getting the funding and working with the uh, level of government that we do with their offices and making sure our applications are accurate and complete uh, and, and proper, um, we've, we've been very successful funding over the last four years and the Barrett Street Bridge came in uh, on budget and uh, on time, uh, staff to do a good job there I think. And the, Public got engaged, which I think is very nice because the design of the bridge changed as a result of the heritage people and ACO commenting. And one of the things I think we've been very uh, successful at is, is engaging the public and listening. Uh, listening skills are probably the highest requirement in our, in our role if we pay attention to them. Right. Yeah. What are some of the, the, the accomplishments in the last four years that you're most proud of? Um, probably the, the highest one is having the community calm. Um, things have calmed down, people uh, are engaged, um, they're looking to their elected officials. The elected officials are, I think, listening to, to the population. Uh, we're getting the issues to the table, we're working on them uh, together and I, I generally think if you looked at Port Hope four years ago and you looked at Port Hope now, um, we're, we're in much better shape. But from a cultural population perspective, there's not strong diversity. There's, uh, I shouldn't say not diversity. There's, we're not divisive. Right. Um, the issues on the table, uh, we are Port Hope. So we do have our controversies, but in, like in true Port Hope fashion, we, we tend to solve them. Accomplishments, without question, one of the ones is how we're structured now. Our administration is a collaborative uh, structure where we participate with uh, you know, our staff following the direction of the municipality and the citizens to, to achieve goals, and we've achieved a, a, a lot of goals. And, and that compares to when I first decided to run, um, you know, it was kind of like maybe you won't accomplish much. It's going to be pretty frustrating. And I'd like to be very clear, it has not been frustrating. And we've had a lot of support. And if you work together and you believe together to common causes, people are very supportive. Right. So it's been quite rewarding. 
part yeah. of that structure change was the decision to go without a, a CAO. Are you still firm in that uh, in that decision? Was that a you bill that as a successful decision throughout the last four years? In, in conjunction with the total restructuring, and we're not quite finished. Uh, we went from a CAO and seven directors to we've been running with five directors at this point in time. <clears throat> we will be adding one more director, and that's a community development director. That's the person who would hold the and will take the portfolio of planning and marketing, and that ties our strategic goals looking forward. So that'll be the portfolio that I think is going to be very important in, in implementing and seeing the strategic plans go forward. <clears throat> the CAO question, I, I'll tell you firmly, I, I, we do not need one. Right. Uh, very unusual circumstance, not uh, common in a municipality our size, but working collaboratively and, and closely with uh, our directors, they, they're making decisions. Um, the issue I, and this is not an individual thing about any CAO or anything, but the position of CAO traditionally in a, in a municipal government tends to be uh, the final stop. Um, and I think it creates silos. So the CAO is the one making the decisions on behalf of each of the portfolios. The budget decisions. Our last budget was probably the best, best budget I've seen uh, come forward. And it comes about as putting <laughs> five people in a room saying work it out to this level, figure out your priorities and come out and tell us you know, it's okay. And they learned about each other's portfolios, what the priorities are. So out of everything that I think has really been effective, it, it's one of the, the strong points, independent of, of projects. So I'm very comfortable that we operate without a CAO, probably saving $150,000 to $180,000 alone there. Right. We've reduced by one uh, directorship. And, and still having more efficiency and, and getting more done. Uh, and that's probably you know, another hundred odd thousand dollars. So those are significant savings at the top level uh, and, and still getting efficiency. And that's what we said with you know, the campaign to start with. Increased efficiency, increased productivity. And, and we've achieved those. Were there any challenges, major challenges or stumbling blocks that you found in the first four years coming in as a, as a new mayor? It, it, I, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, going through the changes, you know, and taking uh, a divisive situation and hot topics and getting them, so we're listening and calming down. It's if we listen to the people, you know, and pay attention and work together. Generally, things calm down. Once they're calmed down, we move things forward. Uh, in the first year, we basically put the brakes on everything. Just, right. Just if you remember, we. We said, let's just stop, take our breath here, and, and see where we're going and, and what we're doing and, and how we're doing it. And then we, that's when we realigned uh, our human resources and made uh, some changes. And the last four years, York, are now, I feel that we've got things where we need to have them to move forward and get things done. We've got a lot of things done, but there's a lot of things we need to do, I think, going, going forward. So that'll lead us to the, the next question. Why are you looking to, to be reelected? As mayor, what do you finished. what do you want to do? You're not finished yet. So what do you what I, do you still have left to do? Oh, you know, uh, the list would be long, probably longer longer than we have. I think the key thing is to continue with the foundational elements that we have and make sure they're stable. So that council is running in a true governance area. The staff is taking you know good direction. That we're collaborative, working together, um, and and that and that's key. We we are we represent the community. You know, and we need to continue to do that. The communication levels are, are good. You know, I think our listening skills are good. You've been to a couple of our meetings. We, we do engage with the public. We allow questions. Um, so moving forward, I think we fixed a lot of things, like building a house. The foundation is there, and now we can really move some, some projects forward. You know, and there's a, a lot of things that I think now we can do. Our finances are in better shape. We actually had a surplus. We didn't borrow money. You know, it, it's just, it's kind of exciting. Right. <laughs> the amount that's been done. And it's been done collaboratively with, uh, you know, our staff too. We have succession planning. We've got new directors. We have, have people, you know, coming to the community who, who want to do business with us now. We're, we're open for business. I mean, I can't stop now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just getting ramped up. Yeah, one, one more though. <laughs> Come on. One, one, just one more? Well, you know, you, you no, can't no. say that now because I mean four years and but it'll go by said, in a heartbeat but like I this last quarter. I said that the first time. I, I, I really thought we'd come in, fix things up, and then I'd be happy to you know, 
move on. And, and if that's what the people choose, that, that's absolutely acceptable. You know, but I think we're, we're in a really good uh, spot. I think we have to make sure that we you know, continue to be who we are and how we are. And I've said right from the start, we're going to be under a lot of economic pressure. We've achieved so much. We have new businesses. We have people coming who are, are wanting to be in this community for specific reasons. The social structure is improving. We did a review of our, well, our strategic plan. It was very much directed at, at looking after people. I mean, people are more important than cars. All that stuff is just now we can do it. We've got a community improvement plan in place. We've got some funding, we've got direction. We've got new people running for council, younger people, and I've talked to them. They're coming out because they now feel comfortable. They're not gonna be attacked, things aren't terrible, we're not going to solve problems. So I think the next four years are really gonna be you know, instrumental, but a lot of fun, not in the wrong way, but. That's what we've talked about a lot, is getting the younger generations in, involved in, in municipal politics and not just, well, the committee level is great and all that, but to actually run for council is a, is a huge difference than we've seen in the past. We've, we've got uh, a lot of potentially great councillors. If, if I get in, the ones who don't get in, we're going to put them to work somewhere else, you know, because uh, they're going to bring forth new ideas. They're, they're ambitious. I've talked to, to many of them. And, and they do, they, they want to help the community. And we had conversations when uh, council salaries went up, that we need to increase the salary. I don't think that's effectively brought anybody new to the table. I think what has happened is that people, uh, younger people who want to be engaged have seen, well, we now go to one meeting every two weeks for council before, as you know, it was one Tuesday was council, the next Tuesday was committee of the whole. Right. Those kind of efficiencies, you know, um, now mean you have a better family life, whether you're staff or, I mean, you still do a lot of work, you know, but, but you don't have to go some evenings or as often. The fact that uh, you know, we're all in the same plane with, with our audience now, you know, we've restructured our, our staff is up front. We're, we're very engaged in our, in our you know, meetings now and our, our processes. So I, I think it's drawn people out. Um, right. They're, they're a little more comfortable. They can manage and and it's not just one or two we've got three or four or five I think really good opportunities <laughs> with young people and they're really enthusiastic and that's that's great is, is that enthusiasm we got a lot more to get to I want to talk to you about a couple of issues that came up this term and then we'll take a look at the next four years should you be reelected as behind the ballot continues here on your TV Welcome back to Behind the Ballot, your TV's extensive coverage of the 2018 municipal election. I'm York Bellsmith, sitting with uh, Porto Mayor uh, Bob Sanderson, running for re-election. Let's talk about a couple of the issues that came up uh, during this, this past term of council, and the one that's, that's most recent and most fresh with everybody is uh, 65 Ward Street in the old hospital. Talk to us a little bit about that process and what it was like going through that, and where we are now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well. <clears throat> We're dealing it like Port Hope always does. We have controversy, you know, and I think council is in a very difficult position because you want both goals. We are absolutely in need and support long-term care and Southbridge. Not only for revamping what they have, but if we could have more long-term care, we would. We also have, uh, unfortunately, faced with the old hospital, which is a heritage building, and heritage in Port Hope is extremely important right. and not to be blown off too easily or quickly. So unfortunately during this situation, the Southbridge people own the old hospital and, and their plan would be to demolish it. Um, and easy to say that should just happen or, or not happen. And, but I think that we need to do uh, a lot more work and we've gone through a process which seems very controversial, but in fact is rather healthy because it's allowed council to hear very strong arguments from both sides. It's, caused some council to be on one side and some council to be on the other. Uh, I'd like to give my position on that because I voted against reconsideration. And right. reconsideration uh, is something that said, um, should council reconsider its intent to designate? 
And I, I did so um, because I think we are in the middle of a process that needs to be, be finalized. And I don't want to be too quick to say that we should throw away our hospital. It may well end up that it, it needs to be demolished or can be. But I think what happens now is we can work uh, hard and closely from a municipal perspective with Southbridge to look at options to get their long-term care facilities up and running as, as fast as we can. I don't know that it requires the demolition of the uh, hospital. That may be the end result, but we're also going to look at uh, alternate locations. It's a timing, and, and I would like to point out that long-term care has been provided by Southbridge in, in an excellent fashion for a period of time, and they will continue to do so. So the argument that long-term care is jeopardized yeah, is not accurate. So it's not jeopardized, but the hospital right now is. So a little bit more time to go through the process and then come back to a normal council with all the facts and information, that's when the decisions should be made. And I'm not you know, conducive to making that uh, agreement now. So having a reconsideration, I, if all of council wanted, we would absolutely do it. Right. But council uh, needed a two-thirds vote and uh, we weren't going to get it. Um, I kind of would not personally bring forward a reconsideration motion on it um, when it's got such an emotional component to it. I, I think by bringing it forward, knowing it won't pass, um, caused people a lot of angst, the people who are staff or, or residents. So hopefully we'll have this kind of resolved uh, within the near future, um, but I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to hurry to destroy the hospital. Uh, Southbridge is a very you know, good company and they'll work with us on the timelines we, we need to. And then whatever decision is made at that point in time will be made by a council, probably the next council. That was my next question. Yep. Is that going to be a decision made by this council no. or the new one? No, I don't think there's time for this council right. to, to bring it in. And, and I think that the new councillors that we see coming forward are totally capable of having monitored the situation. And when it comes back to council, making that decision at that point in time you know and and by then we can also hopefully do a lot more work um, proper work not the emotional polarization right but look at the options so we can say if if that hospital has to come down and that's you know what the uh, municipality is uh, you know comfortable with and is needed to keep long-term care that's what we should consider if we can find another alternative for Southbridge or whatever we'll do that are you talking another location for, for Southbridge yeah. to move the entire, like yeah. the long-term care would be somewhere else in the municipality? I've asked staff to look at other locations now. They technically should need four acres. They don't have it where they are. Um, it, it's a good site for them where it is, but I, I think we could look at alternative sites. It's going to get down to some finances, um, but the reality is we want long-term care and we will have it. Right. You know, we don't have to make a decision right this minute because it's gone long enough to, oh, well, then it's, let's get rid of the hospital. It's, it, it's important to a lot of people, too. A big part about some of the controversy over this is when it came out, when the vote came in, in council, is when people were reading that, at least through social media, they thought it was final. They thought that that, that was the final decision, boom. No, no. There's it, more to the story. No, it, 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 it's a motion brought forward for reconsideration. Should we have made the decision we made you know, to have an intent to designate. And council de has, has decided, well, we should stick with it and see if that's what we, we should do. Right. You know, and not get, you know, stampeded into, you know, losing the building and, and just, you know, moving, moving forward. That right. may be the end result, but mm, let the process do it. There'll be more to come on this yeah. topic for sure. Uh, let's talk about the PHIA and, and the cleanup over the last four years the or biggest, year term. Probably it's the biggest uh, concept that we have in front of us. Um, when I came to office, uh, it was still not functioning. Um, we've worked, uh, probably I can't tell you how much time goes into it, but we have a municipal team now and we're working closely with the federal government, the rubber hitting the road. Right? We, the center pier is being cleared off. We have really gone through a lot of uh, effort, both from a municipal perspective and the federal government and uh, Canadian Nuclear Labs, which is the contractor, right. you know, to make sure that when we implement and do this uh, within the community, it's uh, safe and it's going to be done in time and uh, properly, uh, and, and we're, we're underway now. That's going to take four years. 
and it needs constant supervision. It, it, we don't agree on everything with the federal government. I mean, sure. we're our municipality, and so it's very important for us to make sure not only that the project is managed well, and I think we're doing a crackerjack job there, uh, but to also make sure that post remediation, what do we do? So that planning process and the public input needs to start now. Um, I'm asking staff to uh, resurrect a committee that we had for the Ganaraska River, modify it so that we can start to look at the entire waterfront, the West Beach, the uh, East Beach, the Turning Basin, the center, the, the river, and start to incorporate what it's going to be like. You know, four years from now, we're going to have that center pier cleared up. It's going to be serviced. Right. The beaches, you know, the, there's going to be some more controversy coming up. The ring road, the uh, chemical well, yeah, one exactly. wants to put in. Um, people are already sort of, you know, polarizing themselves a little bit, uh, and I'm trying to prevent that because I'm saying what we should do is not think about the ring road right now because it's going to have to come forth, and the public could be engaged. We're going to challenge Cameco on the requirement. They'll challenge us on things, and, and that'll that's Port Hope being Port Hope, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which, in a sense, is a little bit of divisiveness, but some and to some degree it, it is healthy for discussion. It, it's very healthy because that's how you get the end result. You get the you know, two factions uh, who are stating their case. As, as elected officials, we, we count on both, you know, and our staff to, to do this. What I've asked is for the goal to be maximizing, you know, access and use of our beaches, period. Now, the ring road will come into that, but let's not say yes to the ring road or no to the ring road. Let's say we want our beaches remediated and used to, to their maximum advantage. And if the ring road uh, is a component of that, we look at that. If the turning basin should be a yacht club, we need to look at that. What should we do with the center pier? Should it just be a park? That's the exciting part for the next four years, to plan that and get that organized. And I said, you know, my, my platform generally is, well, my buttons I got believe together, because I believe together we can do just almost anything. But my platform technically would be working together to keep Port Hope, Port Hope. Right, <laughs> you know. and that, that's important. That's important to a lot of people. Everybody who lives in Port Hope has either been there for 200 years in family or came recently, but everybody has a reason to like that municipality, to love that municipality and live in it. You mentioned four years a couple of times. That's a <laughs> lot of stuff you're talking about to get accomplished in, in four years. What's the realistic goal for, for the end of this council coming up to have done that would satisfy you as mayor? Well, implementing most of the strategic plan, I, I would absolutely love to see the new Ruth Clark Center. Uh, we need to be identified and putting many, money where our mouth is to be an age-friendly community. We need to be a healthier community, um, you know, walking, uh, our trails, uh, all those kinds of things. We need to bring into our strategic plan, and we just did a review, uh, and so it's an addendum to our strategic plan, that, that says we need to be more involved in our, in our social um, we do have homeless people and we do need uh, housing. Everybody talks about it, but we actually have to do something about right. it. I'd like to see the community improvement plan get active so that we invest in the economic viability of the, the core area. We bought Lakeland uh, House next to the uh, you know, t current town hall. That allows us for uh, the future, for, for you know, growth. Um, whatever these lands are going to, we immediately get more parking. You know, and, it, and it's, you know, council is supportive, but it's been work in progress. We came in kind of close to lame duck. Um, right. You know, and, you know, <laughs> certainly one councillor who was running against me thought it should go to the next council. Well, you can't wait that long. It's a, it's a strategic move. The other, the other part with respect to the strategic goals that we have are going to very much tie into, you know, uh, climate control environment, not to use cliche terms. But we've got a working group that we're starting to, to really um, get some effective input on how to, you know, conduct ourselves post-secondary education stuff, you know, uh, plans for not just recycling but for an environmental impact, carbon, you know, trading. It, it, it's exciting. It's not in our strategic plan strong enough. We need to be stronger advocates of our social needs. You know, and I think we need to be uh, progressive and take a leadership, you know, in environmental. If we want to be that community that's healthy, happy, you know, uh, vital, uh, we, we need to do these things. We can get it all done. Right. And if it's not totally finished in four years, it won't be derailed. And that's, that's important because it does seem that that can definitely that's happen. That's why right now it could, things can be derailed. Uh, that's why I'm here. 
Is that why then you say it's not a time to change course, but to stay the course? It, is that? Absolutely. It's like changing those horses in midstream or something. You have to remember, we're going to have an, a new council. And yes, they're going to be bright and uh, you know, active, what have you. They need, I, I believe, you know, still that steady leadership. Right. Up in that vision. They need to buy into it. Um, it's, it's not a time to have six or seven new council members. We have two currently running. Right. And, and you don't know they're going to get in, right? And then you've got uh, Councillor Hickey or myself as, as mayor. And uh, there's, that's definitely going to bring in, there's no doubt about it that it's going to happen, that's going to bring in a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of wanting to jump right in there. And there's yeah. got to be a way to sort of rein that in a little bit and focus. Yeah, I don't think that's difficult for me uh, because I do listen and I like working with people as teams. So I would do the same thing as I did last time. Get together and say, you know, what are your priorities? We've got a strategic plan. If you haven't bought into it, you better say so. Right. Right? I mean, they can see what we're doing. Projects aside, okay, there'll be individual projects, but that's, that's not the future. And there'll be projects that you'll see in the next four years. Thank you. Bob, <laughs> thank you very much. You've been watching Behind the Ballot. We've been talking with Municipality of Port Hope Mayor Bob Sanderson, vying for re-election. You've been watching Behind the Ballot, your TV's extensive coverage of the 2018 municipal election.